Well, from the earliest stages of NBA history, various eras have been defined by the counterbalance of two all-time great forces. Of course, the 1960s was a perpetual battle in contrast of the individual excellence of Will Chamberlain versus the leadership and dynastic dominance of Bill Russell. While the 80s were famously characterized by the blue-collar grit of the Boston Celtics, helmed by Larry Bird, and the flashy showtime glitz of the Los Angeles Lakers, with Magic Johnson pulling all of the strings. And even into the 2010s, which showcased the prodding, flopping, and plowing of the athletic physical anomaly of LeBron James versus the surgical precision and skill of Steph Curry. All of these players held in the highest of regards without having their individual greatness diminished by their principal era specific foe. But for some reason, arguably the best tandem of opposing players throughout any era of basketball history are routinely both slandered in hindsight. Of course, I am talking about Kobe Bryant and Tim Duncan, two of not merely the best overall players of all time, but in the handful of guys in the discussion of best full court two-way players ever. The two of them, separated by only one year in the draft, with both retiring in the same season, Duncan with 19 years of service in one jersey and Kobe with 20. Two players who actually never cheated the game, did it the right way, and dominated their era, with both of these players combining to produce an astonishing 13 finals appearances in a 16-year span, running from 1999 to 2014, while winning 10 NBA titles, 5 for each of them. And since both of them hailed from the same conference, it really does stand to question just how many more titles the other would have won if they didn't have to face the other for a 20 year span of time. And again, that is while doing it on both ends of the court for the vast majority of their entire careers. These two are tied with 15 total All-NBA team selections, second all-time in NBA history behind only LeBron James, while Kobe's 11 first-team selections is one more than Duncan's 10. Duncan, meanwhile, has 15 All-NBA defensive team selections as well, which is the most ever. Kobe's 12 is second all-time, with again, Bryant having one more first team selection on the defensive end with nine to Duncan's eight. There is no doubt that both of these players have produced resumes that should land each of them in top five all-time discussions. But the question does remain, who was better? Who goes above whom in this little hierarchical ranking and why? And while I have the utmost respect for Tim Duncan personally, I don't think this is much of a conversation. Because again, these two individuals stand heads and shoulders above virtually everyone ever when discussing the best full court players, mixing in with the likes of Michael Jordan and Hakeem Olajuwon on the short list. So there really isn't a substantial gap between Duncan's defense and Kobe's. Even if we were to give Timmy the check mark on this side of the ball, the gap between the two on that end is nowhere near the void that exists in Kobe's favor on the offensive side of the ball, as Bryant completely and thoroughly owned the entire time period Duncan was in the league from an offensive production standpoint. Kobe led the NBA in scoring and points scored for a 13-year span, and during that time frame, league-wide scoring was only 97 points per game. For some perspective on that, league-wide scoring has swelled to 114 per game for the last two NBA league years. Despite Kobe playing in, by far and without close comparison, the lowest scoring, slowest paced era in NBA history by a lot, he is still top three all time in league history in most 40, 50, and 60 point games. And for some perspective on that, Bryant still has nearly 50 more 40 point games currently than LeBron James. While Kobe's 25 50-point career games are more than LeBron James and Kevin Durant combined. 
Tim Duncan had one season in his entire 19-year career where he scored at least 2,000 points, while Kobe had eight such seasons. Conversely, Kobe is sporting 12 seasons in which he averaged at least 25 points per game, while Duncan, again, had only one. When I say, from an offensive standpoint, this isn't close, I mean it is a vast chasm of a difference. But the great equalizer is, of course, team success. And Duncan had more consistent team success than Bryant in the regular season, famously posting 1450 win campaigns, which is second most in NBA history behind only Kareem Abdul Jabbar's 16. And Duncan's regular season career win loss record also dwarfs Kobe, as Timmy's career 71.9% win percentage is 12th best in NBA history, which is substantially higher than Kobe's 62% career win percentage. But all of this regular season success did not translate to substantially more success than Kobe experienced in the playoffs, as they both won five titles and Bryant actually made it to one more finals appearance than Duncan. And speaking of the playoffs, well, Kobe also had the better of Duncan head-to-head -head in the only part of the season that really mattered, the postseason where Kobe holds an 18-12 head-to-head record against Duncan overall, while in those 30 games, Bryant produced a stat line of 28 points, 6 rebounds, and 5 assists, compared to Duncan's per-game averages of 24 points, 13 rebounds, and 4 assists, translating to a 4-2 series head-to-head -head record in favor of Bryant. And this is despite, by and large, the Spurs having better teams. And yes, while Kobe played with Shaq for eight of his 20 NBA seasons and would constitute a better single player than Duncan ever had, Bryant actually had relatively middling to poor roster support surrounding him for the remaining 12 seasons he was in the NBA. And quite frankly, the early 2000s teams were pretty thin outside of Shaq and Kobe. This is while Duncan had arguably the best organization behind him for the entirety of his 19 seasons. After all, Duncan was drafted onto a team that had David Robinson. And no, Robinson was not at the level Shaq was when Bryant was acquired by the Lakers on draft night in 96. But there is a pervasive narrative out there that paints Robinson as significantly more diminished than he actually was at the time when Duncan was drafted in 97. During Tim Duncan's rookie season of 1997-98, David Robinson was still just in his age 32 season. That year, Robinson was All-NBA second team and All-NBA second team defense, while he finished seventh in season-end MVP voting and third in Defensive Player of the Year voting. And right as David Robinson was on his way out in 2002-2003, Manu Ginobili was brought on board to join Tony Parker, who was drafted the year earlier. So in Duncan's first title, he had David Robinson, who is a top 20 all-time player, and he was still just 33 years old in that first championship season. And every other championship Tim Duncan won was alongside Tony Parker and Manu Ginobili. While Duncan's fifth and final championship not only had those two players, but also Kawhi Leonard. Then there are the coaches to consider. While Duncan played all 19 seasons for Greg Popovich, one of the five best to ever do it, yes, Kobe did play for Phil Jackson, though he did so for only 11 of his 20 NBA seasons. And in the remaining nine years of his NBA career, Kobe played for seven other head coaches. While the Spurs were a model of consistency, the laughingstock Lakers were a dreadful model of upheaval held together many years merely by the individual excellence of Kobe Bryant. Yet again, all of that equated to these two winning the exact same number of titles and Kobe beating Duncan four times out of their six playoff meetings. That was while Kobe three-peated and then later repeated in his career. Of course, Tim Duncan never won consecutive titles a single time in his entire NBA stint. There is no denying Tim Duncan has a prominent spot on the pantheon of all-time greats, a surefire top 10 and very arguably top 5 player of all time. But yet again, 
the criminally underrated Kobe Bryant comes up check marks over Tim Duncan in virtually any way you decide to slice it. The two of them, elite, all-time caliber defenders for their respective positions, yet Kobe Bryant is arguably the greatest offensive force in NBA history, if not a surefire top three guy alongside Wilt Chamberlain and Michael Jordan. The sheer totality of Kobe's dominance on both ends of the court, coupled with his team success getting to seven championships and winning five, should place Kobe Bryant shoulder to shoulder with any player who has ever lived.